right? And the emerald tablets um, of Thoth are literally mind changing and mind blowing just because you understand when this was written and the terminology being used is um, when was it written? Far too accurate for now. So, uh, I'm, I'm sure that here it is. Emerald tablet, also known as the Smar Smargdine Smargdine tablet or the Tabula Smargdina. Boy, I fucked that up. Uh, it's a Hermes, compact and Trismegistus. Cri yeah. A cryptic hermetic text. It was highly regarded by Islamic and European alchemists as the foundation of their art. Though attributed to the legendary Hellenistic figure Hermes Tris Trismegus. How do you say it, bro? How do you Trismegistus. Say it? Trismegistus. Yeah. The text of the Emerald Tablet first appears in a number of early medieval Arabic sources the oldest of which dates to the late 8th or early 9th century. It was translated into Latin several times in the 12th and 13th centuries. Numerous interpretations and commentaries followed. So what does it say, though? The Egyptian god Thoth. Okay, it says, beginning in the 2nd century BC onwards, Greek texts attributed to Hermes, uh, a syncretic combination of Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth appeared in Greco-Roman Egypt. Those texts knows it, known as the Hermetica, our heterogeneous, hetero, heterogeneous collection of works that in the modern day era are commonly subdivided into two groups. The technical hermetica compromising of astrological, medical, botanical, alchemical, and magical writings. And the religio-philosophical hermetica comprising of mystical, philosophical writings. Holy shit. Is this weed talk, Joseph? No, this is so legit. So legit, my man. So this dude was probably an alien. <laughs> dude, first of all, there are no probablys. Yeah. That's the benefit once you hear it or read it, um, is the fact that it's given in first person and that's not possible. The things that are being said are impossible. Enough time has passed, though, that it's not like that. But, but it, I'm going to read that. He literally says, hey, there's a spaceship on Earth, and <laughs> this is where it is. <laughs> because if all you care about is information, right, like that's what you start to see is when you get to everybody's civilization, Asian, Indian, African, when you get to the crux of their information, Nobody's disagreeing with anybody. Right. If you figured out who, how the fuck they did it, if there was any logical explanation that people could have done it, I would be on board. I'd be like, no, okay. But, but there aren't any people saying that. In le human beings can, there are, it's possible if you had enough power and you had enough engineering and mathematics that you could figure out how to design and construct the pyramid. Yes. But then the logistical problem of getting the stones from hundreds of miles away, massive, massive, several ton, up to 80 ton stones. Joe. That's crazy. If you, 500 even, miles away, some of them. Even if you could do it, let me ask you this. Would you build it on sand? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was originally sand. See, that's the thing. The, right. This was a fertile yeah. valley. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Right. The that's, Nile Valley. That, that they, was the reason they had why they electric and Wi-Fi and Ooh. they had all of that. They probably did. And that's probably where the Younger Dryas Impact Theory comes in. The greatest trick is to make us believe that people back then were dumber and we're right. smarter. Right. And that whole thing is a fallacy. Yeah, that's and definitely not real. But it's worth it for us to believe that. I think we are the, the children of the survivors of some great catastrophe. And I think that's why every single not everybody biblical scholar. What? Not everybody. Some people. What do you mean? Are that. Some people are the survivors? Right. Well, I mean, most human beings probably got wiped out in comet storms 
And I think we probably got – there's been points in history that they know of where human beings got down to like 7,000 people. Who's counting them? I think they use genetics and they backtrace and they try to find individuals that were capable of having X amount of children. I wonder how they do the calculations. It's a good question. The things in Hollywood guessing, and, in, and in writing that have attracted our attention worldwide were all based on some truth. So all the stories of hobbits and have been successful in all of their genres. Why? Because they existed. Like, like we now know that there were whole pygmy groups and that, you know, we understand that that's what the Seven Dwarves was. Yeah. Like that island of Flores, man, that they found. The, the, they literally call it a hobbit. It was like a three-foot-tall person. It was covered in hair, smaller head than us, used tools. As a, as a preteen, I knew that Atlantis really existed just because of how it was spoken of offhandedly. Mm-hmm. Just that it was known in early to writings. Yeah. <clears throat> well, not just mentioned. But mentioned offhandedly, like you would a place that's just a landmark. Right. We landed in New York before we went to Montreal. Yeah. We were in Austin. Yeah. By, by Dallas. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen the the guy that thinks that they found the spot in Africa? What is that? Uh, that the ring called? That Jimmy Corsetti is uh. He's on this. This dude is an, an expert in this shit. And he's an expert in uh, ancient catastrophes and, and the remnants and the evidence that shows that these civilizations existed and something happened. And he's focused on this one area in Africa that he believes is Atlantis. And he, he says it has all the hallmark characteristics and there's all the evidence of massive water erosion surrounding the area. And that at one point in time, it's very likely that this area got hit with a massive flood and it matches all the characteristics of Atlantis. When you see it, when you see the way the, the concentric circles of rings, like yeah. try explaining this. <clears throat> like, you're going to see it. And try explaining this through a natural phenomenon that doesn't exist anywhere around it. Right. Concentric circles that is near what used to be water and there's heavy water erosion marks all around it that indicate massive amounts.